Hello, I'm Sean Atwood. I spent 26 months in Sheriff Joe Pyle's jail system. First half of that I spent in Towers Jail and the second half of that was in the Madison Street Jail. Now, following on from part one of surviving Sheriff Joe Pyle's jail system, there's a few things I'd like to add. First off, I'll cover some medical issues. Don't go in there and tell them that you're feeling suicidal. If you think it's going to get you out of your cell or you're going to get, get you some attention, you're right, but it's not the kind of attention you're going to want. If you tell them you're feeling suicidal, they'll either four-point you or five-point you, which means they will put you in a special cell and chain you to it by your ankles and wrists, which is the four-point, or they'll strap your head down as well, which is the five-point, and you'll have to urinate and defecate exactly where you lay. The guards say, you know, you can shout them if you want to come out and use the toilet, but good luck trying to get the guards to help you do that. You, you'll be basically lying there in a pool of your own filth. Now, it's very hard to get seen by a medical. The procedure is you have to fill out what's called a medical tank order, and you have to ask a guard for that. If he's in a good mood, he might give you one. You fill out your complaint and then you, sign, you give it back to him and he signs it. And then you just better pray that it, it gets to the medical staff as it goes through the various departments. The medical staff determine who will be seen and who won't. And they operate on the basis that nearly all inmates are fakers. So every year you've got prisoners dying from stuff like lack of inhalers, diabetics that need the medication. Now, I had a cellmate. Um, in maximum security who schooled me on how to get seen he really knew how to play the system and what he, he said every medical tank order is like a lottery ticket you can't just put one in and cross your fingers and hope for the best you gotta keep putting them in every single day that way you've got more tickets in the lottery and I did that and it, it worked and I managed to get seen so that's one piece of advice um, you can use now like I mentioned in part one when you go in, it's all divided amongst the different races and gangs. It's whites, blacks, Mexicans, and Mexican-Americans. Um, the latter two are the Mexicans call themselves Paisas, and the Mexican-Americans call themselves Chicanos. Now, I'm a white person, so I came under control of the whites. I had to go to white boy meetings. I had to vote on white issues. And I had to play along with the gang, even though I didn't join the gang. Because if you join in the gang, you've got to put your work in to earn your political ink, which means you've got to do violent acts to earn your tattoos. So it's, it's a fine line that you've got to travel between the rules these gangs have got in force and the rules that the guards have got in force. And the stuff that the gangs have got in force, you better pay more attention to because you're going to get smashed or possibly killed. Now, these include things as simple as bad hygiene. You've got to take showers or else your, your race may smash you for having bad hygiene. If someone calls you a punk or a bitch or hits you, you've got to fight that person on the spot or else your whole race will smash you. So there's all these rules that the gangs have got in force that you've got to follow as well. Now every head of the race has guys under him called torpedoes and these are guys who go in no questions asked and smash someone for the head of the race. So if they've got an issue with you, if you haven't, you know, if you've got the kind of crimes, crimes against women or children, heaven help you, because the gangs have got two um, orders on those. They've got SOS, which is smash on site, and KOS, which is kill, kill on site. If, you, if you're a paedophile, if you've done a crime against a child, you've got nothing coming. It's, it's going to be an extremely dangerous situation you've got yourself in. Heaven help you. Um, the only other thing that I can remember then, basically, is... They give you toothpaste, it, it was called a Merifresh when I was there, but I think that's been banned now because it had um, some, it was made in China and it had some chemical in it that the federal government discovered was in antifreeze. And yeah, so a Merifresh, hopefully leave the prisoners in there still getting it, but whatever the state toothpaste is, don't trust Joe or Pyro. it's probably the cheapest and most unhealthy um, they could possibly have. But what it is useful for is sealing cracks in the walls where the cockroaches get in. If you can keep a store of the state toothpaste with you at all times, because you, you're constantly getting moved around in the, in the jail, it's a very transitory environment, 
you can use that toothpaste to seal the cracks in the walls to minimise the um, threats from the cockroaches. Um, other than that, you're allowed to buy toothpaste from the commissary, regular toothpaste. So hopefully if you've got money on, on your books, you can afford to do that. And the other thing is as well, never use the state deodorant that they give you. It bubbles and fizzes in your armpits. The guys use the women, women's stick deodorant off the commissary list. Um, they would buy that instead of using the state deodorant. So you've got to be very careful with these products that the state give you because they're toxic and harmful. Anyway, I just wanted to add these uh, tips because I left them out of the earlier video. Um, and like I said last time, I did 26 months and got through relatively unscathed. And, you know, this is just practical advice for people who may be facing jail time. Never claim that I'm, I'm a tough guy or anything like that. It's just, you know, just keep yourself to yourself, try and get through it and follow these rules and you should be able to make it. All right, good luck.